Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today we are checking out the latest arrival to the Kobo series, the Kobo Sage, the 8 inch writing capable device from Kobo. So let's check it out. And here it is, Kobo Sage. This is the packaging that it comes in with. On the front you have the device, of course, and on the back you have the contents and some other mumbo jumbo. One thing to notice immediately is that you will not be getting a pen with Kobo Sage, even though it is a uh, writing capable device. This is why they say at the front, pair with Kobo Stylus. So yeah, basically, so that you know what to expect. And the contents of the box are the device, a really nice uh, quality uh, USB-C cable and Kobo Sage quick start guide and some more legal mambo jumbo stuff. All right, let's focus on Kobo Sage. And here is the Kobo Sage, the latest of the devices that Kobo has on offer and the second that has writing capability. The first one being the bigger brother or sister called Ellipsa, which is 10.3 inches and that has been covered on my deep guide earlier this year. So if you want to check it out, you can check out the links at the end of the video or just search in my deep guide for Kobo Ellipsa. Now, uh, Kobo Sage is an 8 inch device. It has the same form factor as the new Kobo Libra 2 and as their traditional lines. So we have this expanded uh, side here for holding, comfortable holding. And unlike the Ellipsa, we do have the front and back page buttons that work equally on the books and the notebooks, which is a very, very welcome change. The overall device is designed really, really nicely and it uh, despite being built out of plastic, this is something that I actually prefer, uh, seeing how the metal and glass combinations are actually quite fragile and they add to the weight. When you make a device fully out of plastic, but you design it well and it's well manufactured and it's a good plastic, then you get a robust device that's flexible enough to withstand daily scuffs and tuffles and all that kind of stuff. And it is lightweight. And Kobo Sage, even though it's a larger device, um, is 240 grams light. It also is very, very thin and very, very nicely made. The plastic itself on the rear, you have this kind of, um, it's not the rubberized plastic, but it's a softer type of plastic that you see. So we have the Rakuten Kobo logo indented in here. We have this lovely mesh kind of indentation that helps with holding the device and allowing it not to slide around. And we also have the power button and discrete power button on the bottom. The front, as I mentioned, we have two buttons here and the screen is flush with the surface. Nothing on the top, nothing on the side, except for the power connection, which actually is used for uh, the power cover. It's supposed to be able to actually power the device or recharge or retop the charge of the device. On the bottom, we have nothing. And on the side, we only have the USB-C and the um, LED for status of the device. So very clean affair, really nicely designed, thinner on the one side than on the other. And it's a consistent line between the devices. You have now Kobo Libra 2, you have Sage and the Ellipsa, they all have this kind of same de uh, design, which is a nice thing to see because it's definitely, once you kind of see it, you go, oh, that's a Kobo. And that's something that's really good to see. Build quality overall, really, really good. It feels excellent in the hand. And because it has auto rotation, you can flip it around and it reorients in whatever preference you would like to handle it, which is a cool thing to see. Overall, the design and build quality of the Kobo Sage is something that I've come to expect from Kobo devices, which means it's excellent. So it looks great, it's functional, it's ergonomic, it's light, it's thin where it needs to be, it's thick where it needs to be, well-balanced weight and everything is as it should. Plus, it feels a little bit more modern, not just an iteration, it just has the right roundings where it needs to be rounded. And you have this kind of a slight 
uh, bend going up which is really really nice to see so overall i really like the design and i welcome the uh, decision that they kept the physical buttons uh, on the kobo sage because yeah ellipsa doesn't have them and maybe it would have been a good idea to have these on that one too Specifications are interesting on the Kobo Sage. As I mentioned, it's using an 8-inch HD Carta e-ink screen, which is using the resolution of 1920 by 1440, which means that we have 300 ppi, even though we are using this slightly larger 8-inch screen panel. It has 32 gigabytes of non-expandable internal memory. There's a quad-core 1.8 gigahertz uh, CPU running or powering the device pretty much the same as Kobo Ellipsa um, it doesn't actually mention how much RAM but if it's the same as Kobo Ellipsa then it's probably having the uh, two gigabytes of RAM it supports uh, both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi bandwidth it's, it's a Bluetooth enabled device which is also a um, really really cool addition to have so you can pair up your uh, Bluetooth speakers or headphones but but that is the only way that you can have audio capability because Kobo Sage does not have a speaker. So if you want audio, in this case, the new addition to uh, Libra 2 and Sage is the ability to have audiobooks. The only way to listen to it is via the headphones or a Bluetooth speaker. The device is IPX8 certified, which means it is waterproof and it can withstand up to 60 minutes in two meters of water. Since this is a device uh, review loan i will not be testing that it is equipped with the uh, comfort light pro which is their really really excellent uniform front light dual color light so you can uh, blend between night light and daytime light or you can use it automatic if that's something that you want and it also has adjustable um, intensity all the way to 100 which is quite a lot and all the way to zero which means it's totally off so yes you can of course turn it completely off as well as I mentioned, this is a uh, writing capable device, but the Kobo pen does not come bundled with it. This is something that you will have to buy separately. This is the pen in question. This is the one that comes with Kobo Ellipsa uh, or the package if you get the Kobo Ellipsa. So this is the same pen that works on the um, Sage as well. As far as the compatibility of the pen goes, I don't have any other alternatives that will work with it, but I've seen from JB and from others where they tested like um, Microsoft compatible active pens are supposed to work with Kobo. So specifications are generally good, but I have not mentioned the battery, have I yet? Well, that's because Kobo uh, Sage is using a 1200 milliamp battery, which for a note taking device seems to be way too low. Uh, what's especially surprising is that it looks like that the Kobo Libra 2 has a 1500 milliamp battery, which is a smaller device, a uh, smaller screen, less power thirsty, yet it has a bigger battery. Now, there's also another indication here with Kobo Sage and the battery itself. So they got you this smaller battery. They got this connector here, which is supposed to connect to the exclusive power charging sleep cover that they have on offer only for Kobo Sage. There is obviously some kind of thinking behind using a smaller battery. Was it for uh, the purposes of making it thinner, lighter or something like that? Maybe. And that is okay. But as you will see in the battery section when I'm doing the testing, that's um, there are some consequences to that decision, shall we say it like that. So the specifications look good and it's a great Kobo device as normally, but the battery is on the weak side and this will most definitely reflect on the battery life performance of the Kobo Sage. 
The screen is, as I said, an 8-inch e-ink 1200 um, panel, and it supports a big enough resolu resolution to actually have 300 ppi. And that's a really good thing, because it really offers that crispness even when you are dealing with tiny, tiny text. So tiny text, high contrast situations on a very small screen can be a problem, but on the same that most definitely is not the case because the panel offers high contrast really really good uh, clarity and high enough resolution to ensure that you get the 300 ppi for crispness of the content this is one of the examples where you can definitely see that even though we're talking about uber tiny content here you can see that everything is clear and crisp and readable considering just how tiny that text actually is. I think that it would have been a nice thing to actually have contrast control which would definitely help with um, yeah ability to kind of change things up a little bit but at the moment unless I am completely mistaken I don't think that we do have that so that's something that's uh, definitely lacking and I have been trying to check out the options and everything else but the options are fairly limited and I do not have uh, an option to adjust the screen uh, brightness or the contrast or anything like that which I think would have been a nice addition so that you can customize it to your liking yes I think the default calibration is done really really well and it's very detailed and really really readable I mean it feels uh, especially if you turn off the front light all the way off um, yeah it actually starts feeling like reading a piece of paper which is quite quite nice thing to see now um, yeah especially here the ghosting is not a problem at all I mean it's I believe this is regal refresh so this is this is a very nice example here and you can see the level of details the clarity and most importantly that we do not have banding color banding now he's having a bit of difficulty getting to focus here but there we go and the most important part for me is that there is no color banding so you can actually have nice layers of gray which is not the case on every device so uh, Kobo Sage like Kobo Ellipsa is definitely dealing with the content the images and everything in a proper way and I think that the image quality and um, um, yeah, clarity is really good so here's an example of an image without the front light at all so we're gonna increase Increase the front light to 34% and it doesn't wash out uh, so the front light is not washing out the contrast uh, pretty much it keeps it nicely so now let's try and pump it up all the way to 100 and that is the nice thing to see it's not washing out the grays it's not washing out the contrast it's simply brightening up the whole thing which is a really really cool thing to see Although this is quite bright and not something that I would personally use because it kind of defies the purpose, but it's nicely balanced. So I found myself using it at around 25 to 30 percent, which is kind of a very pleasant type of uh, front light. It still looks like a paper, but it brightens it up a little bit. So it's not as dark as when the front light is turned completely off. The screen surface is really good. So as you know, it's not glass, it's plastic. So yes, some, some reflections will be there, of course, but they, these are uber strong lights. So as such, you can see that it dulls the reflections down quite a bit and it also does a good job at um, diffusing them nicely. So this is the super strong light. So, but if I turn it towards the window, for example, I can't even catch the reflection. Well, I catch a little bit, but it diffuses it very, very nicely. So that's something that I think is important to kind of know. Okay, not that way, this way, thank you. So that's something that's important to know that the lights that I have here are really, really strong ones so that you just know what kind of reflections are we talking about. But either way, you have the front light that will compensate should you find yourself in a situation where uh, a, ref a reflective glare might be an issue or not. For me, it's not. I think it's calibrated really, really nicely and I found it really 
really usable in pretty much all of the situations and I enjoyed the screen quality and the default calibration really a lot it's just that it would be nice to have the flexibility to adjust it to your own personal preferences maybe sometime in the future that would be a cool thing to see but even as it is I think that it works and it looks great the battery life on Kobo Sage is a problem, so let's not beat around the bush. I'm just going to lay out the battery tests that I've done, so I usually just do several tests, but immediately I noticed that there is a problem with the battery life on this device. So let's boil it down to this. The testings were done with the same controlled environment, Wi-Fi on, uh, no active updates or syncing going on, and the front light at 30%. So something that's normal, something that's daily usable, something that's not extreme in any way, shape or form. So a real life scenario. What I did was I took a timer for 30 minutes and then I did two tests. The first one was manually every 20 seconds pushing the button to flip a page, which was actually fine because I was reading another or listening to another audiobook, had my timer and actually it went much faster than I thought. So this, that was test number one to simulate reading. Test number two was continuous writing, same conditions, 30% front light, Wi-Fi on, uh, in a basic notebook. So no OCR recognition, no nothing advanced, just the basic notebook, just basic writing. Again, for 30 minutes, uh, with the hope that I can extrapolate a value or a meaningful value from those things and then see what happens. Well, what happened was that, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the writing, it uh, consumed 20% of the battery in 30 minutes, which means that it consumes 40% of the battery life per hour, which of course totals to two and a half hours of writing on the Kobo Sage on a single charge, which is terrible. Um, so then um, I thought that that was wrong and then I redid it again only to get the exact same results. So then I did the reading tests the way I told you and the battery consumption was a bit less definitely but the uh, averaging out showed that then the lifetime battery lifetime would be 4.16 hours on a single charge just for reading and flipping pages. And that's, um, yeah, that, that's just really, really bad. So I'm either inclined to believe that something's wrong at the moment, software wise, um, and that, yeah, that this, this is not <laughs> performing correctly because they are saying on their website, weeks of battery life, depending on usage, but you know, you can't really have weeks of battery life and then depending on usage get two and a half hours worth of battery life that's a problem now granted every other device kobo device that i've used especially my kobo libra the old kobo libra literally had weeks and weeks or months of battery life as a reader uh, kobo ellipsa as a reader also had excellent battery life um, as a reader but while you're doing note taking then it would drain the battery quite a bit you can also check the uh, review on that but nowhere near as bad as the kobo sage and i'm actually surprised that uh, I haven't heard about that so far because this is a major issue. So this is something that absolutely has to be fixed. Um, this is a device that's been synced or updated with the latest updates and everything like that. It's not the first charge. So I had a first charge cycle and it was recharged and then started from normal. So I don't know. I really don't know what's going on, but it is not a good indication. And I repeated the test several times and that battery is just like draining constantly. So I don't know, maybe, maybe something just went wrong here, but I did reboot it. I did all of the, did all of those things, but yeah, initial repeated testing 
on the Kobo Sage, on this Kobo Sage that I got, maybe I got a lemon, I don't know. Uh, but on this device, repeated testing got me the repeated results. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, drain it and then get it up to 100%. And then I'm going to try with Wi-Fi off, front light off and then front light on just to kind of see what's going on like where where the discrepancy lies because this is more than unusual and this is a big problem because as a form factor it's brilliant for note taking for students for therapists or for anybody who relies on taking notes and actually writing for hours at a time per day and I envision that a lot of people like that, especially students, will be inclined and very interested to take um, Kobo Sage, for example, because it's more affordable than the competitors and it offers quite a lot of things, especially with the advanced notebook, etc. etc. But if the the findings are correct and if this is not my device specific issue if this is an issue that other Kobo Sages are also having, if this is a real issue, like not the isolated incident kind of a thing um, which I'm not excluding it's entirely possible that it's just this device that's for some reason doing that because the the, the findings are just simply so uh, bad that I'm, I'm inclined to believe that this is a mistake of some sort if it's not a mistake, if somebody else can confirm that the battery life on their Kobo Sage as well is performing in the same way, then that's a really big problem and that's a really, really important consideration to keep in mind if you're looking to buy this device and to try and to, to do note taking and all that kind of stuff because you won't be able to last a day on a single charge. There's no way that this device can do a single day on, uh, uh, on a single charge the way it is i have to put that stipulation so at this moment i don't know i haven't heard any other reviewer actually mentioning this and that's why i'm saying that hey if nobody else mentioned it either then nobody tested it or i got a lemon so that's something that we gotta see so basically i think the best thing would be to yeah jb uh test out on your kobo sage how do you get the performance go like right for 30 minutes uh wi-fi on front light at 30 percent and see what battery percentage you started at and what battery percentage you ended at so that we can get a controlled testing and see hopefully your device is having better battery life and maybe this one is just lemon but if you also get like the 20 percent uh, uh battery life spent in that 30 minute test then that's pretty much a confirmation that uh, yeah Kobo Sage has a problem with the battery life so we don't know yet um, but until somebody else does the same test and then confirms or denies uh, the, the findings then we'll know for sure but for now my findings are worrying General user interface is the standard Kobo uh, interface that we have. So you have your homepage where you have your recent reads, you have your recommendations, you have your books and all that kind of stuff. Then you have your my books, which is basically your library, which can be organized, sorted by authors, series. You can create your own collections, which is basically how you organize your content on a Kobo device. Um, and you also have this cover, which is basically your shop. And a cool thing about this and a new thing for these guys, uh, the Libre 2 and the Sage, is that now we also have audiobooks. So now you have, because these are Bluetooth devices, you have the ability to download uh, audiobooks. And um, yeah, don't be fooled by the first one when I was actually looking here. It was like, what the hell? Is it just four of them? And uh, no, this is kind of a bug. It's really weird. Uh, I don't know what they are doing, but it's, it's giving you a wrong impression because if you go view all then you actually see that there's quite a few uh, audiobooks uh, available now considering that this is a relatively new platform and of course this is not audible uh, compatible of course not because kindle or amazon is the competitor so that's not going to be uh, something that you'll be able to use on this device but yeah you will be able to build your library of audiobooks on the kobo sage as well at the moment i don't know if they do have an option of uh 
having both a book and an audiobook at the same time. I've tried to figure it out and I've tried to kind of find that, but I wasn't able to find the option of uh, whether you were able to get the reading book and an audiobook as one package or not. It just, to me at least, uh, at the moment it looks like it's audiobooks. And you also have Overdrive, which is your library to uh, yeah, rent your books. On the top, we have the top bar with time, uh, front light control, Wi-Fi, battery status, refresh is not the screen refresh. Refresh and sync is basically how you synchronize your software to synchronize the Dropbox content and to check for the device updates. So that's something that's a really good idea to check from time to time and the device does it automatically and you have search function to search through your books and all that kind of stuff then in the bottom right corner we have more which is your settings i believe so you have your wish list you have my notebooks that's the only way to access the notebooks at the at the moment you got my dropbox my articles which is something that's uh, i believe done via the not overdrive but uh, what are they called pocket yeah pocket i was never able to actually get that to work on any of my kobo devices maybe i'm doing something wrong but i've never been been able to get that to work. Reading activity, beta features such as your web browser, which is to all intents and purposes useless. I mean, it's so slow that I'm not even going to show it. It's just, it, it's beta for a reason. Plus, you're not buying a device like this for that. So yes, while technically you do have a web browser, it's uh, not there yet, shall we put it like that. Then you got your additional settings where you can set up your accounts, overdrive, date time, language, dictionaries, Wi-Fi's, Bluetooth connection. So basically that's where, where you will set up your Bluetooth devices. Um, then we have our syncing and updates, energy saving and privacy, reading settings, manage downloads, device information, and about Kobo Sage. So pretty much all standard stuff that you are used to and very, very similar, pretty much identical to the Kobo Ellipsa. So um, I'm not going to go through all of the details because I don't want to repeat myself. So if you are interested in all of the details regarding how this works and what to do and how to set up my Dropbox and all that kind of stuff, that's all, all have been already covered on my Kobo Ellipsa uh, review. So just check it out. It's a three part video. So very long. I man man wanted to make sure that I cover everything in detail. So that one can be used as a guide. This one is going to be just a review, so if you need a guide, head on over to the Kobo Ellipsa videos once you're finished watching this one. All in all, it's a very straightforward type of a, a user interface, something that I like, but there are things that I really don't like. So, for example, um, it would have been nice to actually have this front light functionality from any um, state of the device, for example, which is not the case at the moment. So, for example, if I'm in a reader, that's okay because the reader itself has the front light functionality exposed, right? So, there I can do it and you have auto rotation on, off and all that kind of stuff, which is great for all intents and purposes. That's how it works. However, if I actually go to my notebooks and what? But where did my notebook disappear? I had I had a notebook here. Where did it disappear? What the hell happened? Well, okay, that's alarming because I had two notebooks here which I worked on, like battery testing and all that kind of stuff. A good thing I wrote stuff down because now they just disappeared. And huh. well, there you go. That's a good thing to actually test stuff out. So my notebooks disappeared. Well, that's clearly a very big negative thing. Um, yeah, where are my notebooks? Not R, but just one A. 
All right, I really don't like that. Um, so that's a serious issue that just happened <laughs> right as we were doing it. So that's something that's uh, very worrying for me. However, I was talking about the ability to adjust auto rotation options in front light and all that kind of stuff and how the user interface can be improved. So for example, in your uh, notebooks, you tap here to get more options and even if I go into more options I don't have an option to adjust my front light I don't have an option to turn the auto rotation on or off and I don't have an option to slide down or do anything in in actual fact if I wanted to simply adjust the front light from my notebook what I'm actually forced to do at the moment is to go here get out of the notebook wait for it to close, adjust my front light to where I want it to, and then go back into my notebook. So that I think is completely unnecessary. And um, yeah, that, that's not good user experience. And this has been present uh, for some time uh, from Kobo Ellipse. And that was a problem that I mentioned in Kobo Ellipse as well, but they still haven't actually done anything about it. And um, yeah, if you want to turn the auto rotation on or off, that's even more convoluted because then you actually have to go outside you have to go to more settings and I believe you go to reading settings and then I say I just want it in portrait mode and now let's see if that translates for the device itself so if I'm in my notebooks and I rotate yes but it stays like this. All right, so uh, definitely, definitely some work left to, quite a bit of work left to do to get this user experience onto a level where it actually all works. It's obvious that they are going from a e-reader mindset and they're just starting to get into a note-taking mindset. And that's something that you can most definitely see in the um, uh, user interface and user experience overall. So I think it's gonna take some time for them to actually understand and make a mental shift from an e-reader to a note-taking device, which is something that they absolutely have to do because if they are making a note-taking device. So at the moment, it's not that bad, but there are definitely areas which I constantly find frustrating, most notably auto rotation and the front light. Absolutely unnecessary to exit the app, adjust it, and then go back to the uh, notebook. Very, very distracting. Other than that, I think it's okay, but my summary of the um, overall user interface for Kobo as an e-reader device, I think that it's excellent and that's where it actually shines. As a note-taking device, it definitely has some ways to go and it would be nice to see quicker improvements and quicker strides to actually modernize this device so that it feels good and that it actually works as, um, that it's actually as streamlined as its competitors currently are. As I mentioned, this is not going to be a guide video. For that, you will need to head on over to my Kobo Ellipsa review and guide. But so if you're dealing with a PDF, um, it's pretty straightforward. The buttons work for previous and next page. Pinch to zoom actually works. So once you are in a zoom state and he refreshes that he zoomed, then you can use one finger to very slowly uh, navigate around the page. What you can do is you can zoom in, for example, into maybe this format that you maybe wanted and then you kind of center it like this maybe that's a document that you have that's like that and then you could uh, go to the next page and previous page but the problem is that while the zoom is retained the relative position of the frame that you're viewing frame uh, or the offset is not retained when you flip the page so the document will just move so effectively not that usable for cropping your page and checking it out the hyperlinks work normally you just tap on it and it goes there and the device has plenty of power and plenty of oomph to handle uh, large documents with a lot of images and it can go cycle through them very nicely if you don't want to use the physical buttons you can tap on one of the sides here for previous and next page however it is much faster to actually and more responsive 
expensive to do it with physical buttons. Of course, that's something that makes sense. If you long press on a word, you will automatically go into the dictionary mode and you can do a web search of it, if you will. You are able to mark up your documents. You are able to press one of the buttons and highlight or delete with the other button as well. As far as the controls go, a middle tap will take you to the main menu. At the bottom, you have the navigation and you have your bookmarks and all of that kind of stuff. Incidentally, you bookmark by tapping the upper right corner and you get the little earmark. Here we have going from next to the previous uh, chapter um, if the the document actually supports that so it really depends on the document itself what's actually nice is that you can actually see which chapter you are at and these dots mark where you have been where are you coming from so it's actually easy to go back to the page where you came from on the top bar we can exit the book we can uh, adjust the scale and zoom so basically like pinch to zoom but you can do it manually up there if you want to next to it you have the auto rotation option so that's the same one as in the settings basically this is the easiest way to access the auto rotation option if it's set to auto rotate then it will flip around uh, yeah to landscape mode portrait vertical or the other way around and like this and it's really fast and really really good to use that way what i especially like about it is basically that this one lends itself to be used like this and in my experience i've just reverted to using it in this manner and then everything suddenly comes into play so while a lot of people are going to be uh inclined to use it in a portrait mode what i do suggest is that you attempt at least try to use a kobo device in a landscape mode because as a reader it does it extremely well it is able to format everything that pretty much perfectly that you would need it the ergonomics here are absolutely lovely with the buttons as well then it just becomes something that just makes a lot of sense however you have also the option of uh, restricting the rotation to just portrait or landscape so everything is there then we got our front light control which we've seen so you can see natural light daytime nighttime light or automatic so it becomes a little bit more as you uh, approach the nighttime it becomes more nighttime uh, blah 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 then we have the front light which i talked about the only thing that i really want to mention is that this is as on any other kobo device an exceptionally good and uniform front light excellent uniformity excellent balance even at the highest intensity it is pleasant to use which is most definitely not the case on all of the devices and still i think kobo pretty much has uh, if not the best but at least one of the best front lights uh, of any device out there then we have additional settings and in the settings you can yeah adjust your header footer how they are you can show the progress bar or not you can switch around your previous and next button you can invert them or anything like that and then we also have one more page which is uh yeah page appearance do you want to refresh the full screen refresh every chapter or if you wanted to you can do every page or every x pages so that you never have any ghosting whatsoever which is a really cool thing to see we also have the option of turning the dark mode on which will basically invert the content and this works well especially if you turn the front light quite a lot off then it becomes something that's very very nice and readable so it's okay the only thing is that in the dark mode the reflections then will become an issue this is something that uh, you have to kind of keep in mind so if you are in a highly reflective uh, type of an environment with really super strong lights then the dark mode probably won't work that well um, but or you can compensate with the brightness but then why would you have the dark mode and that that kind of defies the purpose i mean it works it's just 
I don't see the reason why you would do that. And you also have the on-screen controls so that you can choose between the orientation, the touch boxes where they are. So the default one is previous page, next page, menu, but you can also rearrange them in any of these four combinations. And page forward and back can be um, uh, turned into tapping or swiping or swiping only depending on your preferences so those are the settings and those are the things if you are looking for more details as i said head on over to the kobo ellipse video where we have the underlining selection and all that kind of stuff but yeah these are the basic functionalities of the pdf and for more epub functionality as well that's also been covered in the same uh, review so you can head on over there and check those details as well. Uh, it suffice to say that the Kobo Sage has the same functionalities as Kobo Ellipsa as, as a reader and as a note-taking device um, and it has the same limitations and it has the same uh, benefits and same functionalities so it's the same basically. Obviously, the cool thing about the Kobo Sage is that it's a note-taking capable device. So if you go to more and you go to my notebooks, ha, huh, my notebook hasn't actually disappeared this time. So this is where you add your notebooks and the story is exactly the same as with Kobo Ellipsa. Again, I'm not going to cover everything because there's a ton of things to cover and I believe the uh, video two out of three is the one that's dealing with the notebooks and the advanced notebook and the basic notebook and all of these kinds of things. So what I'm just going to say here regarding Kobo Sage and the notebook functionality is that it's exactly the same as on Kobo Lipsa. You have your basic notebooks, you have the advanced notebooks, all of the power and all of the limitations are uh, present on the Kobo Sage as well. That being said, I want to focus on the writing experience of the Kobo Sage. And uh, the platform has had some months to mature, the software side of things has had some time to mature um, since Kobo Elixir, Ellipsa came out. But unfortunately, we haven't seen as much progress as I would have hoped that we would see. So majority of the limitations and problems that I've mentioned in the Kobo Ellipsa are present here. So um, the first and foremost is the, um, the pen itself. So the pen is the Windows compatible or VTP um, pen. So yeah, Dell pencil or some other, pe other pencils that um, uh, are co Windows compatible, those active pens will work on the Kobo device. However, um, the default pen is not bad. It's actually well balanced, even though it has that battery. Uh, the battery is actually designed to go further in so that it's nicely balanced. So those things are well, really well made and it's great quality. It has two buttons. It's a highlighter and a delete. So all that's fine. However, uh, there's like two main problems that I have with uh, this pen. Um, itself. The first one is this. Let me take the microphone so you can hear this. And it's not just when you're tapping. Maybe it's just a personal preference, but this clackiness that um, is present all of the time and I really really don't like that so that's point number one that you was a problem with the pen and stays the problem with the pen the clackiness itself and plus you have a little bit of a give when writing some people may like that I personally don't and for me that's the problem the second problem is the nib itself it's just hard plastic and it basically has no surface, no special surface to it whatsoever. And it's rather dull in the uh, uh, tip department. So while it works and it's fine, it's nothing more than that. It's just fine. I think uh, the biggest sentiment is the biggest contribution to this not being a really bad writing experience is the surface of the screen, which is really, really nice. And when I tried another pen, 
uh, which unfortunately doesn't work with this device, but the feeling, the friction and everything is really, really good, which confirms that this nib is just uh, not that good. It doesn't feel good. It's not that precise. Don't get me wrong. It works fine, but it's just fine. It doesn't work anything more than fine. Um, the writing experience is exactly the same like on Kobo Ellipsa, so nothing has been improved. I'm just going to write a couple of sentences so that people can have an example here because, yeah, it's a good thing to do that. So let's just do that. Right. So hopefully that kind of helps. But if you are looking for more details and more examples of, um, yeah, how does the how does each of these pens or brushes look like and the colors and the strokes and all that kind of stuff, again, head on over to the Kobo Ellipsa. I don't want to repeat myself because everything has been covered in very much details there. So you can find all of the details there um, and it all works exactly the same here on Kobo Sage as well. The final thing that is a again problem with the Kobo Sage as well as it was with the Kobo Ellipsa is that the latency is actually quite on the slower side and you can see that if we write really quickly so let's again if to to refresh it there we go it now refreshed so you can see if i write really quickly it's actually trailing behind and uh, that's the test definitely And this is also an issue because right now, so I don't know what happened here, but at the moment, the device, wow, that was okay. So there's definitely some instabilities with the software because it just became completely unresponsive when I wanted to delete. Uh, there we go. Now it deleted it, but it had some issues. Um, yeah, one thing that I wanted to mention that's different is that we actually have these physical buttons and you can normally go to next page and previous page with the buttons, which is a great thing to see. However, we don't have an option to disable touch input in the notebook. Um, which would have been great because then you can kind of alleviate the device from doing all the palm rejection stuff, etc. I mean, it's doing it quite well, but you still get an occasional uh, unintended swipe or something like that. Um, and while we have the buttons and we have the ability to actually interact with these things with the pen, it would have been nice just to have like a hand gesture thing and turn it on and off so that people can choose these things. I think that would be definitely an improvement for the platform, but currently we don't have that option. Overall, when I combine everything, uh, the writing experience is just fine. So it's not bad, it's not great, it's okay. And I think that's mainly the problem for me because it's been okay now for half a year and we haven't actually seen any real improvement or work on this side of things. But that's the least of the problems. I think the biggest problem for me is the lack of the ability to easily exchange the pen or easily exchange the, the nibs because the nibs are of a specific standard that is not compatible with the other nibs that are much better feeling and all that kind of stuff so you're kind of stuck with these types of pens and all of them have very similar type of feel and very similar type of issues so i think that the biggest problem for me for the writing experience at least is the pen and the lack of better nibs and better options for that 
Desta test revealed that the Kobo Sage is pretty much as slow as the Kobo Ellipsa was. So as you can see, they are all the way down at the bottom. So I haven't retested Kobo Ellipsa since it had some of the updates. So there is an entirely real chance that it's no longer at 93 milliseconds. Maybe it's bumped up also to around mid 80s where Kobo Sage is. But once you cross that 50 millisecond threshold and you go into 80 and 90 millisecond uh, territory then yeah there's there's not really that much difference because it's just bad it's it's really slow and you can see that they are at the bottom of the list this is a lower priced uh, type of a device and somebody would say well yeah active pens are like that no not really i mean look at quirk logic so for example quirk logic paper they have an active pen they also started way at the bottom of the desta test chart and then they did an update and they shot up all the way up uh, only shy to the Remarkable 2's performance, but even so, none of the new books devices were able to reach it. They are close, but nobody surpassed it. And Quirk Logic Paper has been holding that second place in the latency speeds. Uh, yeah, for well over a year now, and that's an active pen as well. So it's not an active pen thing, it's a software thing, and um, yeah, I think that technology can definitely do it. It's just a matter of software optimizations and the engineers actually getting interested to optimize this and maybe giving it enough priority to do that. As it is now, Kobo Sage, like Kobo Ellipsa, very, very slow as far as the writing latency go goes, and um, that doesn't really help the overall writing feel or experience. And now we get to the conclusion time regarding the Kobo Sage. And as usual, let's start with the cons. Well, obviously, the con number one for me and for this device and for these testing purposes will have to be the battery life. And that battery life is so bad that I would place it like con number one, number two and number three, because it, this device, the one that I'm holding in my hand, cannot hold the battery life for an entire day of normal use. And that's a huge problem. These devices are supposed to last for a long time. As I mentioned in the battery section, uh, maybe it's a very strong possibility that something could be wrong with just this unit that I got. So that's an entirely real possibility because the results are such that it points to an anomaly of some sort, right? Um, if, however, somebody else who already got their Sage is able to repeat the test that I talked about and get the similar results, whether it be um, another viewer or JB, which would be fantastic to actually compare these things, and if we get the same results from one or two other people, well, if you got like three out of three devices behaving in the same way, and they confirm this type of battery life issue, then that's a very, very real problem with the Kobo Sage as a device because that's simply not acceptable. That's not an acceptable level of performance. The second con for me would have to be the pen itself. As I said, the clackiness, the discomfort, the quality is great, don't get me wrong, but it's smooth metal, it's metal. You have to uh, press on it hard. It's not that comfortable for prolonged use and this nib is really not that nice. So um, the writing feel is not that good. The latency is not that good. The overall combined writing experience is just fine or okay at best. So it's not terrible, it's definitely not great, it's somewhere in the lower mid-tier kind of a uh, um, range, which could be okay, but I think that once you actually combine the, the battery problem and you get the writing latency as well, and we combine some other cons that I'm gonna mention next, then for the price, I would expect more. I would expect actually better. Another con would be the user interface or not actually user interface, but the overall user experience. And I do understand that Kobo are coming from a long eared lineage of uh, making really, really exceptionally good uh, e-reader devices, but 
Kobo Sage is no longer just an e-reader, it is a note-taking device. And as such, it requires some modernization and optimizations of the user interface and user experience to make it more modern and more usable in a real-life situation. Problems such as accessibility to the uh, front light and auto orientation and all of these kinds of things, those are things that I've already mentioned, but there are just a few of them. There's many, many things that should and should already have been improved since it's the same exact platform that Cobalt Ellipsa uses. So they had ample time and ample feedback from users and reviewers to actually take into consideration and you know, kind of get on it. But now we see with Kobo Sage that hasn't really changed. We have the same type of thing and same type of thinking. So there's some rigidity and there's some inertia here. So I hope that they gather momentum towards improving and modernizing the user experience so that the note-taking um, capabilities are more easily accessible and that we don't have as many unnecessary user interface taps and steps and all that kind of stuff because it's really not necessary now at the end of 2021 on the cusps of 2022. We know these things, other people have done the same mistakes, there are brilliant examples out there all they need to do is pay attention check them out and implement them in their own platform to improve it further there are some other smaller negative sides that i would kind of mention and they kind of come from the same type of negatives that i've mentioned on the uh, kobo ellipse as well platform related negatives but for me if we are faced with such a big issue like the battery life if it proves that it's not an isolated case just me having this issue but it's actually how kobo sage performs and how their battery life is on this device then that's such a big problem then everything else is basically just pales in comparison and it's a really glaring issue the second glaring issue for me is the pen as i mentioned so the lack of uh, the ability to have better writing experience now these things are uh, addressable so they can issue a better type of a nib something that has a felt type of a feel maybe a sharper kind of type of a tip or something like that that doesn't have the clackiness because the clackiness is also due to the nib itself those things would definitely improve the writing experience and on the software side of things well they can take a page out of quirk logic's book and um yeah do you know roll up their sleeves and do some work to optimize the way this device actually works and the device the way the note uh, taking is being done to optimize the writing latency because it's most definitely possible this is not a hardware limitation this device and the screen are capable of much faster it's a quad core 1.8 gigahertz so it has more than ample amount of power to do these things i mean weaker devices are much faster than this older screens are much faster than this so it's not the technology it's the software so that's basically the area where a lot of work needs to be put into to actually put the device and the platform as a whole on par with the competition low price or not it doesn't matter where the competition is they need to be closer so if they want to be competitive at this price range uh, kobo sage should be at mid 50s or maybe higher 50 millisecond range definitely not in the 80s and 90s because that's just simply too slow and now on to the positives of the kobo sage well first of all it's the design and the build quality it looks and it feels fantastic the as i said i absolutely love the design i absolutely love the auto orientation feature how well it works with the reader especially when you actually flip it around and uh, uh yeah the portrait doesn't really work but then you flip it around and with these buttons and everything it's just really really good it's extremely comfortable to use and the material whatever they did it's something that makes me want to use it more and more no it's not glass Ooh, ah, look at me. Personally, just personally, I prefer this. I love the mesh on the back. I love the indented button. I love 
I basically love the design of it and it's just a really really well designed uh, device and with the flush screen for writing it just also improves it as a reader as well because you don't get that shadow on the side so I think overall a wonderful uh, hardware design and build quality. The second pro would be the quality, the image quality of the screen. So we're getting an 8 inch screen with 300 ppi and a really good default configuration of the brightness and contrast of the screen. Granted, it would have been nicer or it would be nice if at some point we would get a software capability to adjust the contrast and the brightness in a certain way to our preference. But even as it is, as a, the way it's been calibrated as default, really, really lovely image quality and clarity on the Kobo Sage. Huge plus for the platform is, of course, the advanced notebook. Um, for the details of that, I mean, there's so much that the advanced notebook actually brings to the table and that it differentiates the Kobo Sage and Ellipsa from the competitors that it really is an important consideration to make. Now, granted, I haven't shown or touched the uh, advanced notebook in this review simply because, as I've mentioned one, two, three, four, uh, 1 1.7 million times by now in this video, please do reference the Kobo Ellipsa guide because everything is described there if you are interested to see more info about that. And I do encourage you to do that because if you're interested, that advanced notebook is something to really, really take into consideration. That's a huge pro. And uh, the basic price of the device is a plus because at 260 US dollars you are getting a very high quality manufactured device that's beautiful that's very capable has extended capabilities has writing capability and all of these things which is really good however you have to add to the fact that if you want to write and you don't want to have just a 260 dollar e-reader you will need a pen and that pen is now 40 dollars for this one which amounts to uh 300 dollars without any any kind of a flipbook cover or protection. If you add a basic sleep uh, cover as well, that's another $50. And then we're talking about $350. And if you add that other uh, uh, cover that's not available yet, but they announced, which I believe was around $80, then we're talking like $380. Bucks. So the base price of the unit is very affordable and really, really good at $260 for what it offers and what you can do with it. Now, in order to fully utilize it, you will need a pen. Whether you choose to buy this one, which is $40, or you choose to do buy another one, a Dell pen or something like that with uh, Windows protocol, that's up to you. But we're talking about somewhere around 300 ish dollars to have the Kobo Sage writing enabled and writing capable unless you already have a pen like that in which case hoo -hoo, you get it for 260 bucks. I think that the base price of the unit is good but you have to keep in mind that adding all of these things will definitely add up to the overall cost and it can approach the $400 mark which is way too much if you take into consideration what the device is. So the pro for the Kobo Sage for the price would be the base price and the pen only. As such $300 not cheap but cheap-ish enough to make it a tempting proposition if the battery life is improved and better. If the battery life is the way it is and that's what it is, then yeah, no, no price will be able to justify it because it's simply really, really bad. So what's the overall conclusion regarding the Kobo Sage? I think it's a uh, really nicely designed and really well built e-reader with uh, some powerful note taking capabilities. But unfortunately, whenever I, and it's really healthily priced and all of these things, I think it has a lot going for it. But my number one concern is that battery life if my testing is truly a reflection of what the battery life on Kobo Sage is then that's a complete deal breaker for me because a device like this an e-ink device absolutely absolutely under any circumstances has to be able to do at least six hours 
of something and that's like really really bad preferably an e-ink device should be able to do uh, 8 to 10 hours of any operation under normal circumstances and these are completely normal circumstances and, and I'm able to drain the battery in like two and a half hours of writing for example or maybe four hours of reading so that's definitely such a glaring thing that I'm not able to look past it because it's simply too huge of a deal so I'm honestly hoping that it's the case that I got a unit that has this kind of an issue for some reason and that somebody, other reviewers, JB hopefully, or maybe somebody else that already owns Sage will say, hey, uh, I have my Sage, I did the test and I get way better battery life. I hope that's the case because that would make sense. What I'm getting here, even though it's repeated and controlled and all that kind of stuff and uh, I get the same results over and over again, it simply doesn't make any sense to me because it's too low. Like who in their right mind would design a device like this, go like this, test it and say, yep, that's how we like it, that's, that's good to go. So that part just doesn't make sense to me. It's far more logical at this point that yeah i got a, a, a faulty unit for some sort um and that may be the case i hope if that's the case and that the uh, real battery life state of kobo sage is something more along the lines of kobo ellipsa for example then it is a device that i can wholeheartedly recommend for uh, students or anybody else who may take advantage of that advanced notebook capabilities and if you're already as an e-reader in the kobo universe so then it really does make sense however if it turns out that this battery life, the, the one that I got, is actual state of things, that's how it actually is, then I can't really recommend this device because it can't last even half a day. So that's simply such a big deal breaker for me that it's something that would absolutely have to be um, dealt with because small battery or not, this is simply not something that makes the device usable in a real world scenario. In conclusion, huh, I don't know. For me personally, everything hinges on that battery life. If it's like Kobo Lipsa, then it's a great device. It will serve you well if you are prepared to make compromises for the writing experience and a little bit of a clunky user experience. Uh, the only other thing was those disappeared notebooks. That was also really weird because they were just poof, gone. And that's uh, that was not a good experience at all. And I have the situation where the battery life is the way it is. So I don't know um, if you're asking me, can I recommend this device, the one that I just tested, the one that has bad battery life and that ate away my notebooks? No, I can't recommend that because it has obvious issues. However, if this is an isolated case, an isolated incident, and other users don't have these issues, and other reviewers don't have these issues, then I think that the device has a potential to be a really, really good companion because it's portable, well-built, really good quality screen. Yeah, the writing experience is not great, it's just okay, but if that's something that suits you, then that actually works. So it has a lot going for it, but at the moment, yeah, uh, a couple of glaring question marks that need to be clarified and answered before I can definitely say recommended or not recommended. So stay tuned when I receive some more updates. Check out JB's channel if he's going to be doing some more tests because I know he received his Kobo Sage as well a couple of days ago and he's doing the updates there. So those are the things that I think are worth checking out but uh, it's not a blank uh, recommendation yes or no at the moment there's a bit of a gray zone here and there's some need for clarifications of these issues before I'm able to give you a final verdict sorry about that I didn't want to wait another week until I get the clarifications and everything like that I wanted to give you an honest take on reviewing this device what are the pros what are the cons what's the current situation and if I get some updates I'll pin a comment down below with the updates that clarifies these things and then we'll know more all right that's it for me i hope you liked the video if you did please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell to get notified when new videos are coming up on my deep guide and the next one will be the kobo libra 2 
it's a cute little dude, really, really similar like the Kobo Sage, and it's the successor to my beloved Kobo Libra that I love and use whenever I'm outside to do some reading and all that kind of stuff. How does the Libra 2 stack up to its um, original? And that's the one that I'm going to be doing next. So stay tuned. And somebody also asked uh, about the Kobo Sage, whether or not my daily organizer works on it. Yes, it does. Of course it does. It works exactly the same as it does on the Kobo Ellipsa. There's a dedicated video for that also made and it's exactly the same. So it's just a smaller screen, but it scales normally and it's nice and crisp. So everything's exactly the same. So you can head on over that video, check it out, and then you'll know how it works and how it behaves. Either way, you can go to mydeepguide.com shop to check it out and see if one of those uh, products is something that you might be interested in. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you next time. Bye.